Maybe it is painting speaks louder than words. It's very true. That's a Jermaine Dolan quote. Mm. The other cover but right. isn't it a familiar saying? Something speaks louder than words, doesn't it? Actions. Actions. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that's what a painting is. A painting is an action. Well, it's a trace of actions, isn't it? I'll start with that. It's got to be an adventure, or why would you bother? Silver sea, like mercury, dusky smooth pink sand, green stripe of malachite, ice blue cotton, strong brown hand, day glow shock of tattered frock, in violet shadow fire, sparkle of glass, amber shy, Where's the cups? Where am I? The heart of the world, the Sinai. Was there a moment where you thought, like, art, that, that's, the, that's the journey to go down? Oh, I, you know, I think I always thought that. I was always obsessed with drawing and painting from first time I did it you know, all my childhood really yeah. was there a it was my favourite thing a moment where what where, uh, there was, was there a moment where we, we first like hit the brushes or someone introduced you oh my brother Tommy was my champion he bought me my first oil paints and canvases we were living in Cyprus at the time I was about 12 and he, he thought I was really good because he was a painter himself. But the rest of the family just didn't, he just thought that was nonsense. You know. I might as well have said I want to be an astronaut or a film star, or you know. <laughs> which nowadays everyone would say, go for it, wouldn't they? Definitely, yeah. But that's the 50s mentality was quite harsh, really. No one could do what they wanted, I was told. Well, no one does what they want. <laughs> you know, like, don't be silly. You've got to knuckle down. If you look at the dates of certain paintings, you can see I kind of go through different obsessions of motifs and techniques. You know, that's early Valentine, this idea there. But actually, it's not unlike that little one above the mirror, is it? Come to think of it, I've only just noticed that, actually. So I, just, I, I kind of go neat, and then I go a bit wilder, and then I go neat again. It's probably the story of my life. I used to change schools all the time as a kid, and I'd always start off, I'd get into bad trouble, then I'd reform then everything would be okay, and then I'd change schools again and do it all again. <laughs> I went to about eight schools, and that was always the way. I, you know, I think it is essential, actually. I didn't at the time. I thought you could be a painter and be really good all by yourself. But I think that interaction of meeting serious painters is absolutely crucial to me, you know. Jeff Rigdon, for example. It just opens your mind, doesn't it? And it was the era of opening your mind by other means yeah, yeah. <laughs> as well. So of all, all the places you could have ended up, like why Canterbury? Um, I've never been here. I didn't even come and look at it. I just, it was quite near to London and quite near to France. I have French connections, family and stuff. Because I'd been in Australia for the previous two years, which at the time was incredibly isolated. Culturally, you know. Well, no phones. You know, we didn't have a phone. You couldn't phone home. It was quite folksy. When I went to 
art college, I thought, will I ever stick out three years? You know, it seemed, with all these young kids, which they seemed to me, you know, I'd sort of been around a bit. There were half a dozen others that were 23 or something. Well, all that peace and love, that was going on at the time, and everything's beautiful, man. <laughs> was it like that? No, well, there were people like that, but I was, I'd just been to India, for God's sake, where it wasn't beautiful, man, if you're a beggar on the street with uh, So the sort of drippy, hippie, it's all beautiful and lovely stuff. I didn't embrace that. Jeff Rigdon was the man. Yeah. Ian Jury was also the man, but more about motivating people. Yeah. He was really good at getting you going. Ian Jury is very aggressive, really, quite a heavy dude, but he wouldn't let you, um, you know, continue in your little old ways quietly and secretly. It was, it was like dragging a whelk out of it. <laughs> a shell, and he got down to everybody. He was our year tutor, and he got to know everybody. You know, had immense, he worked bloody hard, actually. But him and Jeff as a team, and they were great mates, were amazing, actually. And we had Stasinos, Parascos, John McLean. It was a kind of, um, in those days, we had Julianaires, everybody who was anybody in abstract painting or any kind of painting. It was just brimming with uh, exciting stuff. You know, they, uh, out of hours, we all hung out together. Kilden and the High Roads and the Neasden Rodettes, which was me. And my sister. What was that about? Ian Jury's first band, Kilburn and the High Roads. He yanked me and my sister in to be dancers, which we did about three gigs. I think it was extremely hard work. You're a good dancer, are you? I am, actually. I should have been a dancer. I am a dancer. I still dance. Do you? Yeah, regularly. Mostly at home, but or at other people's homes. Parties. What kind of dance do you do? Yeah, just general whatever I feel like doing. Oh, wow. Do you Don't know? you dance? I'm a, I'm a good dancer, actually. I thought you might be, actually. Yeah, my granddad was a good dancer. It's come out of me. Mm, mm. Yeah. Well, that was, see, there's another revolution of the 60s, which to me was mega was that you could go to a dance hall and dance. You know, in the 50s, you had to stand around the edges and hope some stupid bloke could ask you to dance. You know, how insulting and stupid is that? And then suddenly you could just get up and dance. That was a massive thing. Do you know paintings are the only kind of full frontal thing? Writing moves by its very nature through words, doesn't it? Yeah. It's can, you know, film, everything does, actually, apart from painting. Stories, what other art forms are there? Dance. That moves yeah. in time. And sculpture, you have to walk round it, don't you? It doesn't have... It's not full frontal like a painting. You just look at a painting and that's it, isn't it? Yeah, it's fascinating. There, isn't there's it? no uh, wandering around it or anything. It's still. But do you know what the final outcome is going to be before you start? No, I wouldn't want to. Why would I bother if I knew? I'd do it to find out. Do you start with any idea or just kind of... Oh, I've always got ideas lingering from the last painting or something I've seen that I love. You know. So there's motifs 
and every painting leads to the next one, really. Mm. You, you kind of have an idea, but you think, I can't do it on this one, because it's already gone in that direction. So do you think, you know, your, your dancing and, you know, your theatre there, do you think that's reflected in the fluidity of your pictures? Yeah, definitely. It's all the same. I was a drummer. I've been in bands. It's all the same thing, really, isn't it? It's Drumming is definitely like dancing, only you get the joy of the racket. <laughs> it's sitting down dancing, and it's brilliant. I'd get a drum kit if I thought I could get away with it. But <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're all the same, you know, writing. I write gibberish late at night. I still write them? You write regularly? I like the actual act of physically writing. I don't do it on a computer. Would you do it on a computer? No, I'm happy. There's something nice about actual writing, isn't there? What kind of book do you write? Uh, philosophical utter nonsense. <laughs> that seem like genius at two in the morning and then you w wake up and read them and go, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that seemed really profound last night. Are you picky? Like, are you perfectionist? Well, yes. Of course I am. Yeah. It's got to be, haven't you? I mean, I can't imagine being any... I'm perfectionist about how I fry an egg in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I want the perfect fried egg. Why? It doesn't always happen, of course, but... Do you think you can ever achieve the perfect painting? Yeah. Have you ever thought this? Over and over again. Because... You know, it's like saying the perfect flower. They're all perfect. The good ones. They're all good, aren't they? Painting's a bit different from flowers. But I do have things that I've stuck behind the wardrobe that I couldn't cope with. And I'll probably get them out in three months and have another go. Oh, do you go back to stuff that you're touching out? Oh, yeah. I'm, I don't waste... I wouldn't throw away a painting because it's canvas and a stretcher, so mm. I'll eventually make it work, even if sometimes I might get it underwater and just get a rough brush and get rid of the whole lot of it. Yeah. I'm not, And then you might, something interesting might happen. That's when you often find out interesting things. I'm in love with colour. Basically, I can't imagine life without it, actually. Can you? Not a life I'd want to be a part of. No. And it's, it's kind of because I'm not a scientist. It's kind of a magical... You kind of think, why are there all these amazing colours? What a gift. Like anything in life, sometimes it all goes smoothly and you've got the right colour and it and that's the end of the painting usually it's like yeah got it you know it needs this and that's oh no I did it right you know you often think that and then you go to make the mark and it's weak or it's you know just not doing it so you take it put under the tap, get rid of it, let it dry, think again. 